Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to My Life, My Choice, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is Wednesday, the 23rd of May, 2018, and the hour is, it's 1 p.m., and all is well. So the hour is 1 p.m. It's a glorious day in sunny, sunny Las Vegas. And my co-host is, I said Las Vegas. Wow. It's a sunny, sunny day in Las Vegas. And my co-host is Olivia Lashley. And she's coming to us live from London in the UK. Hello, Olivia. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Evidently fine, isn't it? Fine, fine, <laughs> yeah. fine. No, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not on. I am not on an adrenaline rush today. Mm-hmm. Just say so mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Just so you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> you know what? Oh, right? shall be re- revealed. Shan't be. Really. <laughs> 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 oh, very good, very good. So no. So how are you, love? How goes it in your world? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I, I suppose at the moment I'm trying to. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to um, kind of figure out some nuances in my life as to um, you know what's being reflected back to me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I've just been really reflective because um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out w- well what I'm trying to tell myself. And as we always say, yeah. you know, when you find yourself back in kind of like the same situation that you've been before. Um, yeah. You're actually trying to tell me. Tell you, sorry, Wendy, I'm going to cough. Yeah, sorry. You're trying to tell yourself something, so I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is because I, I'm I'm a wit like today. It was it was really noisy around here, and um, I don't know what's wrong with my throat. <coughs> it was really noisy around here, and the kids were screaming. Next door, I don't know what they've been doing, but it's like um, they're banging, but it's not its not a loud bang. It's just like tapping. <laughs> and yeah. then you've got people, people speaking outside. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I've been here before when I'm very consciously aware of, um, you know, my external surroundings and, uh, and how much noise is going on. I'm thinking, okay, well, that has to mm-hmm. be a reflection of um, my internal dialogue. So I'm just trying mm-hmm. to figure out, um, how it co- correlates to well, what I am wanting to do. Why am I mm-hmm. again being shown this? Um, so yeah, yeah, I've just been really kind of reflected, reflected. Because I haven't really done anything today. I've just been pottering about, just kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so, I'm so, I'm in, I'm so in a reflective you, mood. So so with that, um, and I definitely need this. They live, and you know when I say this, I heard everything you said. Um, that that being said, coming back to where you are, or coming back to this point where you are being shown shown something, do do you need more inner silence? Um, and I'm literally asking a question. Well, most well, yeah, most probably. Um, uh, Yes, I think yes and no. I think the silence would come um, once I figured out, because the whole point is, you know, with all the noise, I'm shouting at myself, right? I'm trying to disrupt right. myself so I can hear myself, hear the message that I'm, um, you know, trying to give give myself. So, yeah, so I most surely do, but I think that would come, that sort of like, feeling that, uh, more peaceful about life would come once I have figured out exactly what is going on again, because it is an okay. again. All right. Okay, all right. Because you know how because it is, it gets, it gets I, louder. It, sorry, you know how it is, it gets louder and louder and louder until you actually, it's impossible for you to ignore it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's going it's gonna, to it's gonna keep coming up. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry, most you were going to say something, I interrupted you. Um, yeah, because what I was going to say was about you you literally creating the the, the, the silence, the quiet, the, the silence, through, through meditation for, for all intent and purposes. Yeah, yeah. Create, yeah. yeah. So, I, the thing so is, that you can free space for 
for the um I don't know, the breadcrumbs or whatever you want to call it, to drop to drop in. So you can I paste can, the picture together. Uh, I can like if I concentrate enough, like if someone's playing music, I can get it mm-hmm. down or off. You know, if mm-hmm. next door mm-hmm. is making a noise, if I concentrate it, I can actually get it to stop. Um, yes. But I, I know I can do that, and I don't think, I don't, well, I suppose it is part of the message, but it, I'm missing something. It's similar to what, you know, of what the show is about. There's a nuance. There's something that I am missing that's actually... It's, it's trying to shout to me to say, okay, well, you know you've got that. Mm-hmm. What about this bit? This is the bit you're missing, and mm-hmm. that's what I think I'm not picking up on. Did yeah. that answer your question? Yeah. Because, um, yes, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I actually hadn't posed my question right, but that's, that's all for a moment. Um, I, I definitely um, agree with you, you know, coming full circle, um, myself personally, you know, like full circle health wise and people telling you stuff about you and they, please, really, even know me, how are you going to tell me what I can or cannot do or what my capability is? And I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about this, I think it was this morning or yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I take that back. I was thinking about this from Monday. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, I was a little huffed at first. You know, mm. how are you going to tell me what, what my body can or cannot do? Mm. You don't even know. Mm. And then I thought to myself, well, Wendy, this is the third time in your life you've been told something like that. Mm-hmm. What are you saying to you that you are not listening to and or you have listened to in the past, but in the last five years, it keeps coming back up, or it's come mm. back up twice. Mm. Mm. And I was like, you know something, I don't know what it is and I don't care. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think similar to what I was saying, it may not be the things that you already know. No, it might be things. Else. And yes, it might be something else. Yeah, that you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's that's very very true. Um, in in regard to and guys, this is all relevant. We just kind of jumped into the show because this is all relevant to the show and about nuances. And what you just said, Olivia, is right on target. It may be something that you don't know or you're not consciously aware of that yeah. needs to be brought into your awareness. Yeah. So it's not always about um, looking back down memory lane. Sometimes it's literally about what is this showing me? What is it showing me? Not what has it shown me. What is it showing me? And there in itself, guys, is a nuance in itself. What has this shown me is taking you into past tense, into your history, into the experiential side of your life. What is this showing me is taking you into the now and possibly not always but possibly your future so it's about what what you are going to experience versus what you have experienced and that's what Olivia was literally talking about if I haven't missed my guess in regard Mm. to you know what, what 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 you're looking at might not be you delving into the past to find the answer, which, of course, for those of you who listen to the show, that's not really where we come from. That's, that's not where we come from. That's not the coaching paradigm that we use. Your past is definitely something that is viable because it's part of you. You've lived it, etc. But the, 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 um, the spinner here is that you've actually lived it. You cannot relive it again. No matter what you do, you can never, ever, 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 ever relive it again. This moment that has gone is gone. You can never, ever recapture the moment. Hence the reason why people who do drugs and people who are addicted, whether it to be food, whether it to be porn, whether it to be food porn, <laughs> I was the one that said hashtag, whether, whether it be um, food, whether it be porn, whether it be food porn, whether it be alcohol, drugs, drug of choice, fast driving, you know, binge watching, whatever it is, 
whatever it is, you are trying to chase that initial experience that gave you that high or that buzz or that that feeling of um, of contentment, that feeling of security, yada, yada, yada. And it's really important to understand that you can never, ever, ever recapture that. You can create it, but you cannot recapture it. You can't even recreate it, which is what I nearly said. You can't even recreate it because every time you do something, it's new. It's like every dawn is the beginning of a new day. Every sunrise, excuse me, every sunset, (coughs) excuse me, marks the ending of a period in your life that can never, ever be brought back. So as you, as you think about your life and the nuances, and the nuances are really, really important. The nuances are the difference between day and light. The nuances are, are the difference between recognizing that in order to get the, um, the outer case of, I don't know, an electric socket off, you don't try to shove a fork in there and try to pry it in. You use the correct tool. You know, you put a fork in there, you, you, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, electrocute yourself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to electrocute yourself a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And you'll electrocute yourself. So the nuances are the difference between recognizing that, okay, here we go. Recognizing, okay, here we go. A little story, nuance. So was a man... And he was by a body of water. And he was deathly afraid of drowning. He actually fell in the water. I take this back. No, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth on this. He was with his friends. And his friends, um, they were all young. Uh, they had to have been about 18, 19. And he was deathly afraid of the water. And he was by a body of water because they all went out, you know, it was sun shining and they all went out. And his friends dragged him into the water. But when he, when he got into the water, he fell. And he fell face first, face first into the water. That he wasn't, that, that, he, that he was going to drown. That he didn't even realize that if he put his feet on the bottom of, of this, lake or wherever they were, he could have stood up and the water for him would have come below his waist. And and that was my husband. That was my husband. See, the the nuance there is he was so afraid of the water, he didn't actually realize he could stand up in the water. Mm. And the water came below his waist. It came below his waist. But yet still, if um, one of his, I think his friend's name was Wayne, um, who he just hooked up with in the last couple of years, actually, if he, if, if he hadn't sort of dragged him up and, dude, put your feet on the ground, <coughs> put your feet on the floor, you know, <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he, he, he might not be here today. Mm. He might not be here today. Okay, and this is a nuance. This is how, how truthfully a nuance can mean the difference between, uh, we say life and death, or the difference between you getting what you want and you don't get what you want. A nuance is turning right instead of turning left or going straight instead of going back. This is a nuance. And every nuance has the ability... Sorry, this one. Every, every nuance has the ability to create your life, literally, to create your life. You see, as I, as I wrote in the synopsis, most people are striving to live the life that they say that they want to live. And yet, for many, this proves to be elusive. And for others, they're wanting to live their dream life, and it's become downright unattainable. 
I know that most people don't actually understand the universal laws. God's laws, spiritual laws, natural laws, whatever, whatever term makes you, makes you feel right. But guys, if there's one thing that you, that you need to take away from here, we are all under universal laws. We are all under, if, you, if it suits your purpose, God's laws. We are all under spirit law. We are all working within the same paradigm, the same universal paradigm. And there is an order to the universal paradigm. Even though it might not seem that way, there is an order to the universal paradigm. It's like, it's like people, you know, you have people driving. And if you look at it, you know, if you've ever been on an aeroplane and had the, the, the uh, ability to look down as you, as you descend to, to land into the airport and you see all these cars, you can watch the traffic. And at a certain altitude, they look like ants, literally. They look like ants doing busy work. But as you look at that, you'll see there is a certain order, even to the flow of the traffic, the way the traffic's moving. And so it is with our lives. It may appear that everybody's off on tangents doing this and that, but there is a divine order and a divine flow that has been established. Because in order for you to have whatever it is that you want in your life, there is a divine flow that has been established. There is divine order in your life. It may not feel that way, but it is. So when I say most people don't understand the universal laws, I really do mean this. And as a result, they are imagining things and saying things and um, doing things and, and, and thinking things and you know, they're, they're doing all this stuff. They're thinking, imagining, saying, doing things that are disrupting. They disrupt your ability to literally manifest what it is that you want. It disrupts your ability. And I'm not going to say that you don't get what you want, but it's literally like a train going down a track. The disruption is there's somebody on the line and or... A tree has fallen over on the line and or in my case, when, when I lived in the UK, because they had lots of trees around the station in the, in the um, autumn or the fall, when the trees dumped, dumped their leaves, and sometimes the trees would have all these leaves on them and the next day they look like a scarecrow and they've dumped and it rains. This is a problem. This disrupts, this disrupts the ability for the train to go down the line. And if you have put out, you, if you have transmitted something that you want and you have created a disruption, you've created a disruption by the things that you are imagining, the things that you are thinking, the things that you were saying, the things that you were doing, guess what? Everything will grind to a halt or the train's going to have to go off. You know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this where they, they actually move, move um, part of the track so it connects to another another um, line, and, you know, it's going to have to connect to another line for you to get to where you need to be, but you didn't want to go that way. But yet still, the things that you are imagining, the things that you are actually um, uh, ascribing your, your senses to, the things that you are putting your senses to, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? You know, um, did I do all of them? Was that five? What does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? The things that you, and your sixth sense, of course, the things that you are ascribing your senses to and the things that are coming back to you via your sixth sense, everything is out of whack. Or I take that back. No, it's not out of whack. Everything is designed and geared to show you what it is that you need to do, the divine inspired action that you need to take. So you can have what it is that you want. You know, I put in here, and I don't know how many people remember this, because I used to work in this many, many, what, 30, 34 years ago or something like this. But many people, in regard to the universal laws of action, are still work, working in DOS, Black 
screen with white with white um, with white typing with white you know font or what have you or yellow depending and um, many people are still working in DOS mode when there are new and innovative platforms that people can work from that have been created and that have been tested and not only that that have been laid down by you for you because prior to you coming into this incarnation prior to you coming into this incarnation you knew what it is that you or you know what it is that you want to experience however for the majority of us we allow life to get in the way and instead of living life we allow life to use us. And don't get me wrong, here is a living, breathing, sentient thing. And you'll know this because everything after a time will return to that which it came from, to the energetic, seemingly nothingness that it came from. It will move out of form. When, can I just can I just say when you say about uh, everything will return um, and uh, yeah, whatever you said right when when you were talking about the airplane like coming down from the airplane and you know you look down and and, and everything you know it, everything is as small as an ant regardless and actually kind of like it's like regardless of size um, so can you actually exactly. imagine what what you would look like or what we would look what you personally would look like from outer space you know from outer space you're actually um i'd look like you're not you're not di- you're not discernible from the earth itself exactly so in exactly. many ways we are a collective of the planet but exactly. because 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 you can't be dif- dif- differentiated from the earth it means that you are the planet everything everything in the planet is you and the further out you go i mean you go out into the universe once again if you're looking further back from the universe onto the universe you'd be part of the universe and it goes all the way back to your day actually it goes all the way back and beyond your deity your deity so therefore in the end you are your deity also there's no difference exactly ye are god Mm. And you see, that's, an, that's another thing, although we've spoken about that on, on the show before, ye are gods, and people don't understand that. Mm. People, what is your heritage? Where, where, from whence do you come? What is your heritage? And I'm not talking about your parents. I'm not talking about your, your what you call it, your, your physical genealogy and bloodline. I'm talking about your spiritual heritage. You see, because your genealogy and your bloodline, that too goes back to whence it came from. So, oh wow! But um, it's hard. It's, so I, I think it, it's. I think it's. Sorry, Wins, I think it's hard to get your head around. Well, and I, I think it's hard for people, including myself, to get my our heads around. You know, uh, ye are gods, because in my heart of hearts, I kind of know it, but then mm-hmm. maybe not, because sometimes my actions don't live so up to the fact them. that I'm saying, okay, well, yeah, I am a god, um, mm-hmm. but. You know, I'm not saying it's. Uh, I'm not using it as an excuse, but we're not socialized to no, believe we're not. that. We're but not. just because we're not socialized to believe it, it doesn't mean mm-hmm. it isn't it means so. It's not true. No, exactly. it's, it's similar to what I was saying before. Maybe what we're experiencing is we're missing the point. You know, we're not actually mm-hmm. seeing that what mm-hmm. it is actually showing us that is because all, we all have um, things that happen to us that sort of like, um, you know, you, you think of someone, tutors, they phone you, you know, you think of a, uh, you know, you're, you're thinking, about, oh, I wonder what happened to so-and-so. And next minute they're on television. You know, you think, mm-hmm. oh, mm-hmm. my car doesn't sound right. It's going to break down. Tutus, it breaks down. So we are in tune with everything. It's just we don't realize it we, we don't we don't give it the credence we don't that it acknowledge actually it yeah that's right that's right we see ourselves for whatever we, we, we're, we're we're socialized to see ourselves as inferior to well sometimes even each other but um 
we're 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 socialized to believe that um we're inferior to our spiritual self but it's impossible they're, exactly. they're, they're, they're one of the same because they're one of the same you are and that that's a nuance nuance in itself you are mm. your spiritual self and what what has one of the things that has created that olivia for me and people not understanding that they are, they, 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 if it makes you feel better, I'll, I'll say demigods, okay? But your, your spiritual heritage comes from that. It, for those of you who read the word, for those of you who read the word, and by this I'm talking about the Bible, and then for those of you who read the Quran, for those of you who read the Torah, for those of you who, who read the, what's it, the Bhagavad Gita, for those of you who read any kind of spiritual text, anything that's scripture-based, it will tell you that. It will tell you that. But you see, as you said, Olivia, we are not taught to believe it. Actually, it's sacrilegious. It's blasphemous. It's like, who do you think you are? The Mm. devil must be Mm. speaking through you for you to say this. (laughs) And that's not how that goes. That's not how that works. We have been taught... To be, we have been taught a, a life of separation. And for everybody who has been born of woman, they understand, you understand at an intrinsic level, separation. And the first separation comes when you leave your mother's womb. So we understand separation. But yet still, we are taught to live our lives that way. We are separate people. We are separate religions. We are, we are, um, we have dominion over, over the earth. Guess what? Look at, and God bless the people in, in, in Hawaii. What kind of dominion is that? Look up here in, in, in North, I think, yeah, it's North, North of me in Reno. It rained. It rained hard. I looked at somebody's house. Three quarters of it, no, sorry, a third of it was under mud. What kind of dominion is that? If there's a toss-up in a forest between me and a bear, I'm thinking that my chances are next to nil. What kind of dominion is that? And as a result, people have created lives that are separate. And what they don't realize is, is that in creating a life that is separate, From self, everything that you touch is going to be an uphill battle for you to reconnect with. And the name of the game is you know when it's right to reconnect. You know when you're not uh, meant to be separate because it feels right. You know, like sometimes if you do, when you actually go outside and you might take one shoe off and you put it in the grass. Or you kind of lean on a tree. And you can feel it. You can feel it. And guys, these are the nuances. These are the nuances that are, mm, that are slowing or disrupting your ability to manifest what you want. You know, this, this morning I did, um, I, I, did, I did a Facebook Live. And, oh, Lord, have mercy, let me, let me see if I can pull it up, because I, I, some, sometimes I, I note this stuff down, and other times I don't, so guys, just give me a hot second here. All right, be advised, not controlled, okay? That's what I called it. In, in most, um, it, 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 in most work, in most, things that are available to people who are looking to to grow or looking to know themselves or looking to know what their purpose is who for, for most information out there that has been compiled and put together for people who are searching especially I say for now in my era much of it is number one. Much of it we have outgrown. We've outgrown spiritually. Number two, people are telling you 
who you are, what you must do in order to be a blasted clone just like them. People are telling you that, you know, if you don't meditate this way, you won't be able to connect or reconnect with your subconscious self and your divine essence if you don't say, um, when you meditate. Not knowing that any time you zone out or zone in, whether it be reading a book or whether you, you look out the window and you call it having a daydream, not, not actually realizing that you are in a meditative state. Meditation don't take no bells and whistles. It takes discipline. It takes intention. It takes choice. It takes utilizing or invoking some of the laws some of the laws that we are governed by, yes, it does. But do you have to do you have to sit cross legged? Do you have to do this? Do you have to have your feet planted so that your your base chakra is literally in communication with the earth? Guys, you're on earth. You can be upside down and your base chakra be in contact with the earth. So it goes look. Nuances are something that are really, really important in your life. And some of the things are so simplistic. See, one of, one of the things, as for those of you who have never listened to my show before and, and listened to Olivia before, well, I say me. Let me phrase it this way. I have, I have authors. Most of them are dead, might I say. Most of them, most of them are dead. And I have authors who I have adopted as my, um, as, my, um, as my mentors, okay? And as a result of that, I have claimed them as part of my spiritual family. And so you have people like Albert Einstein, who's become my Uncle Al, Neville Goddard, who's become Uncle Nev, Florence Grobel Shin, who's become Auntie Flo, Prentice Mulford, who's become Uncle Prentice. You know, all pe- people like this. And what I have learned from these works, in addition to the works of the Bible, in addition to some of the works from the Quran, some of the works from the Torah, stuff like that I've read and other spiritual texts that I have delved into, what I have learned is, number one, your life is ruled by the choices that you make here, actually, and there. Your, your life is ruled by the choices that you make. Number two, before you came into being, you knew what it was that you wanted to experience. However, you were given the, the tools to make that choice, to make it happen. Number three, the universal creator that resides within you, that is you, is not going to make the choices for you. You, the conscious you, has to make the choice to do what it is that you want to do. These nuances, they're simple. But you see, when they're overlooked, what happens is your life does not unfold the way that it is. Most people, one of the greatest nuances in our lives is most people don't listen to their intuition. Your intuition is one of the greatest faculties that bridge the uh, conscious and the subconscious. It's a bridge. Or it's, it's a direct line between you and your, 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 your chosen deity. That's you talking to you at the deepest level. And what do we do? Intuition says, don't turn right. But you see, you don't want to go that other way because you're dying to pee. Because before you left work, your intuition said, go pee. And you're like, you know something, I don't feel like getting out these spanks so I can pee. Because it took me half an hour to get into these spanks. (laughs) And I don't feel like doing that. And your intuition says, it's okay, take the half hour. And you're like, you get choice. I'm not taking the half hour. And so as a result, you go down the road, then your intuition says, turn, turn left, and you're like, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. If I turn left, they're doing all that work on Sahara Avenue, 
And not only that, every exit that I need to take to get to my house, they're doing roadworks on. I would have to go way up to the top of the Sahara and, and 215, get on the 215 and come down Cheyenne. Uh-uh, I'm not doing that. I am not doing And you argue. You start this, this raging dialogue. You know, you, you, you're having this conversation so hard, you don't even realize the people in front of you are breaking. That's how internalized the conversation is. You hit your brakes, and as you hit your brakes, your intuition says, again, got your undivided attention. Doesn't have the, the reasoning, analytical, and logical mind screaming at you. Your, your intuition says, turn right. And you're like, oh, God, should I turn right? Blah, 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 blah. I am so die to pee. If I didn't have the spanks on, I don't know what would happen. I'm so dying to pee. And you say, no, 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 no. You know something? I'm going to turn right. That's the quickest way. I'm going to go down the freeway. You turn right. And as I've said this on the show a thousand times, a thousand times, you turn right. And you're like, oh, what was that all about? And as you crest that hill and you start going down, you see a wall of red light. And they ain't moving. They ain't moving. And you think, oh, my God, I am so screwed. I am so screwed. And then I should have listened to myself. Your intuition truly is one of the most pronounced, one of the most pronounced universal laws that you have. And yet still we don't listen. On a daily basis, we don't listen. And that's a simple nuance. We don't listen. And just because you're listening, you know, let, 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 me, let me rephrase that. We listen, but we don't act on it. We hear, but we don't listen, and then we don't act on it. You know, guys, one of the things, because when I started to talk about my, my spiritual family, and they are all deceased, I remember speaking about a little, about somebody about that the other day, didn't I, Liz? <laughs> um, <laughs> with... with <laughs> It's amazing how things come back to you when you say things. <laughs> um, in, regard to, in regard to the authors who I am claiming as my spiritual family who have made their transition, as it would be, um, one of them, Auntie Flo, today I was listening to something and I, I, I found out that her family called her Flossy. And I was like, oh, no, Auntie Flo, I never did that. <laughs> It just, it just kind of undermines me everything that you've got flossy. No, these call her flossy. But anyway, so uh, Florence Grovel Shin, um, in her book, one of the things that she said, and she's not the only person who said this, but one of the things that she has said is this. If you are reading any kind of work that is scripture-based, and they're talking about the Lord said this, and the Lord said that. She said, if you for, and I'm going to phrase it this way, for just an experiment, just an experiment, if you changed the word Lord to law, how different would um, your understanding be? Um, what's the phrase? See, see, da, 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 and see the salvation of the law. Um, I can't remember the whole phrase. You've got to forgive me, guys. It, it's gone out of my head. But you've asked for something, and it says about you standing still and see the salvation of the Lord, the Lord God. If you change that to stand ye still, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord law it takes it to a whole different level it takes it to a whole different level of understanding you are not under the lord you come under law and that takes it to a whole different understanding and that's just that's a simple nuance that's a simple nuance but people people will say um, they are looking for the, their, their, their salvation. And again, one of the things that Neville Goddard pointed out, and from Scrovelshin for that matter, and let me see, um, I think Joel Goldsmith and a few other people that I've read, 
Joe Goldsmith's all right. I call him Mr. Goldsmith, so, you know, he, he, he ain't quite there yet for me. Um, but I, I, I respect the work. And one of, one of the things that many, many, many of these metaphysicians and spiritual people have pointed out is, is this. Oh, you know, it just ran out of my head. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. never, what's it, what, what is you saying? <laughs> I would say, oh, okay, salvation. Many people will say that they are looking for um, salvation. They want salvation. And um, not just sort of like when, when they're baptized or what have you or christened or what have you. They're looking for salvation as they move through their life. Okay? They, they are looking for salvation. And many people say that they are looking for salvation. And what they don't understand, when, when, when you don't understand that it's law that you're looking for, they don't understand that salvation is, if you're hungry, the law, the salvation of the law, or the salvation of, of the Lord will give you food. If you're thirsty... Many people don't understand that the salvation that they're looking for is water. And when you come up under, under the law, your salvation will be water if you are thirsty. If you are feeling unloved, the salvation that you're looking for is love. If you are feeling um, uh, uh, broken, the salvation is integration. If you are feeling broke or, no, sorry, if you are feeling uh, financial straits or dire straits with your finances, the salvation is you is for you to have abundance of financial plenty. If you are feeling lack, salvation is abundance. If you are feeling in ill health, salvation is health. But you see, many people will look and they will they will literally say, and this is this is this is a pet peeve of mine. People will look and they will literally say, you know, they're going to allow God to do. Well, you see, you need to make your claim first before you let it go. Okay? You don't you don't sort of get on an airplane and you don't know where it's going. Because you might not have enough fuel to get there. So you do a flight path. How much fuel do I need to get there? You know, is this the right weather to be flying over the Rockies or the Himalayas or, or, or what have you? There are things that are divine inspired things that you need to do. So when there are things that you want, ask for it. Do not assume that God will do for you. I'm here to tell you that the universal creator known to me as God that resides within me will use my energy to assist and support somebody who knows what they want. You don't know what you want, you don't know what you're going to get. You're vague about what you want, vagueness is what you're going to get. These are simple nuances. And people will say, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I don't understand why this is unfolding this way. Even for myself. Here recently is Monday. Okay. I know that I am drawing my situation into my life. And I'm drawing it into my life because it's something that I need to be shown. I was shown at the age of 21 some of this stuff. But I realized that I have evolved. I have grown. So I know that I'm not going backwards because even from five years ago, I know that I have grown. And in saying this now, Liz, you know what, what, what it just told me, what I just got, was that perhaps this is my mechanism to truly let me stop and look at my next serious step. Maybe this, for me, at any rate, maybe this is what it's about. It got, they got my attention. They have my undivided attention. And on top of it, I don't like being, I, I truly, guys, when I tell you 
I don't like anybody, especially doctors, telling me about me. I never liked it in school when teachers would tell me that I would not succeed or why couldn't I be like Joe? Uh, like, really? Because <laughs> that's my big sister. That's one of my big sisters. Why, could, why couldn't I be? Because they were like, Joan was such a pleasant, <laughs> such a pleasant <laughs> pupil in school and blah, blah. Why can't you be more like your sister? You know how that, Olivia, you know, I sometimes I'd look at them. But you see, God bless mum, went to Mrs. Calvert. And I would simply respond, instead of telling them what I really wanted to say, I would simply respond, because I am me. <laughs> because I am me. Literally, that would be my response. And I know sometimes they'd be taken aback, you know, because I, I would use every skill set that I have. And, you know, I can be a little dramatic, you know, so, you know, I had the drama to it. But, but, but that being said, guys, because I, I kind of got off track there, it's really important, it's really important to, um, as Olivia started out saying, know that when something is coming up for you and something keeps coming up for you, and for me, I, I had a, I don't know, um, oh, I, I can do the math. I love calculators, don't you? I love calculations, don't you? Um, all right. For me, I had a 34 hiatus in between the same scenario presenting itself. And now I've had a five-year hiatus, well, yeah, five-year, roughly a five-year hiatus with a scenario presenting itself. But every time it comes up, I realize that I actually... Um, have great movement or a great shift in my spiritual understanding. Great movement you know, and great shift and that, in my spiritual and that, understanding. Another thing I think it shows people is, you know, if you think or oh, oh, if you're in the same situation again and you actually got through it, it's actually showing mm -hmm. that you're growing in strength as well. You know, because mm -hmm. you got, every time it happens, even though I don't think that's the purpose, uh, but every mm -hmm. time it happens, if you see, if you get to the other end of the tunnel, you have grown spiritually. Exactly, exactly. Actually, funny enough, that's what I said to the ladies yesterday, believe it or not. You know, you've come through the end of the tunnel, and the end of the tunnel is actually um, the shade tree. And mm -hmm. when you leave shade tree, you would have gone through another tunnel, and you've gone mm -hmm. through, through that tunnel. So every time you come to the end of something for you, you've gone through it. Mm. See, the, the, na the name of the game is, and I really mean this, attractioners, as I call your attractioners, I really mean this. I try, and I will say I try, with, I would say, a fair amount of success, not to dwell on things of the past, especially if they are things that don't actually assist me in moving forward. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not just talking about burying the past, because we all know from watching Investigation ID and all these things, people who are buried usually come up to the surface. <laughs> Whether it be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, Look, they, they've dug up Tutankhamen and all these people from I don't know how many thousands of years, okay? So it's not about burying your past. What it truly is about doing is, again, being under the universal law, finding forgiveness of the past if it needs to be forgiven. Finding your mechanism to literally let it go and not be a ball and chain around your, around your foot. It's about being okay with that so that you can be okay with where you are now. That's I, I think, you are. I think um, also, because you kind of moved on before, I, um, when I was saying about having an experiences and, um, you know, every time you, every time you um, have an experience and you get to the end of it, you get stronger. 
and it's actually yeah. reframing that so that you see yourself within that in a positive light. So if something is happening or you're having an experience that you actually um, have had before or, or, or it, have had before or it's the first time you've had it every experience has led you to that point and every experience has mm. actually made you stronger so a way to reframe it and sort of like take control especially if you're having um like crazy internal dialogue yeah. thoughts yeah. you know yeah. so actually to try and sort of like um not as, to actually sort of like overcome that one of the things to say putting the positive spin on it is that i am getting stronger you know, so, you know, say like, um, what can I think of? What can I think of? Um, uh, okay, you, you've got, you had your dream job and you got fired. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you lost your house, blah, 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 blah. You built built it all back up again. Same thing happened again. And then you kind of like saying to yourself, well, why, well, why am I in this situation? And you, you, your internal dialogue might be things like, oh, you're so stupid. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And, why? and to actually just put that to rest, all you actually have to say to yourself is, I am getting stronger. D d don't even, my advice would be, don't even engage. Quest, yeah, don't even question it. Just say it. Just to, to to that part of you who keeps sort of like trying to um, what's the word I'm looking for, Wentz? Uh, Hear you down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To, to actually sabotage. Sort of quiet, sabotage. To, to, yeah. To sabotage. To quieten it. You know, you take control. Yeah, and you do take control. It, it's when you said when the other you were saying about um, the bear a little while ago, and mm -hmm. um, like the bear would win. Um, and I was, excuse me, I was watching some, I was watching something the other day, and um, what the guy actually said was, what what he actually did was um, he walked towards the bear, he, he not fast, just really really slowly, and the bear was up on its hind legs, and he just really 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 not even baby like caterpillar footsteps he was taking, um, and uh, he said the thing, if you show fear. Be a yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because what? Yeah. Because because yeah. uh, he, he he was like, well, no, I'm not going to show fear. And and once the bear realised that he wasn't actually afraid or he wasn't, um, you know, going to back down, the bear ran off. Um, I had written something, but it was ages ago. And, and what actually happened had an intention for the guy, mm -hmm. but the guy wasn't mm -hmm. playing in the bear's sandpit. It's the guy was saying, on. no, not happening. So therefore, the bear had to do something else. So it's all about exactly. the way that you actually see, kind of like see yourself in your own reality. You know, um, there are That's bears it. in the shape of bears, wolves, wolves in sheep's clothing, you know, all around us, which in actual mm -hmm. fact is a reflection, mm -hmm. but, you know, we won't go that. And you, you actually just have to stand tall. You have to stand tall. Uh, isn't there a thing in the, in the Bible that says, be not afraid, not that I'm religious, be not afraid. For I am with thee, or something yeah, and like it that. Does. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I am thy rod and thy star. Actually, and can so I just say? Sorry. Go ahead, darling. Go ahead. Um, what I was going to say was, oh yeah, it was going back a bit as well. It's a little off. It's a lot, a little off kilter. But um, you were saying about um, <laughs> Auntie Flossie uh, saying about the, the with the oh, laws, yeah. change the law, change the word law. To law, change the mm -hmm. word Lord the word to Lord. Lord. To Lord. Yeah, and I was looking uh, for uh, a scripture because I was going to do a, I'm, I'm going to do a box like with a heart on it, and I wanted to put a like scripture mm -hmm. around it. And you mm -hmm. know, I was looking at this, and one one Bible said this, another Bible said that. Oh God, Lydia. Another Bible, oh, Bible Liz, said don't. that, and it's like don't. you know don't. these little nuances. Don't. I think it's why I think it's why most religions don't actually stand up anymore. Why it's sort of like churches are be becoming to be empty because all along the way you've had people saying arrogantly, "Oh, if we put it this way, they'll understand a little better." You know, I mean, how, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but how arrogant is that? I mean, that, and, and that's it. How, how arrogant are they that they actually feel it's okay to change their deity's words? Exactly. I mean, 
I mean, and you know, you know, adding a comma or, or adding a, yeah, putting in a comma exactly. or adding a word can change the meaning of something exponentially. It can actually turn it, turn it um, 90 degrees. Exactly. 300, exactly. It, no, 360. I mean, it can change, it can change it completely. You know, so it's like, it's those things like that, that we have to be aware of. And, you know, um, just me saying that and hearing myself mm-hmm. say it tells it's mm-hmm. kind of like saying to me, okay, well, I actually need maybe this thing of, um, you know, the noise and what have you. Maybe how uh, actually maybe it's maybe it's a, maybe it's an actually a correlation. Maybe it's a confirmation uh, because maybe it's hey. I need to change how I'm thinking about it or change. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily how I'm thinking about it. Maybe the maybe yeah, maybe the, the internal dialogue um, that goes. Maybe with how it. you're observing the dialogue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe how you're but observing anyway. the dialogue. Yeah. In in, in regard to what you said, because you know, Liz, that's pet peeve of mine. Of mine, I'm gonna say in in um. And I just looked up something random, or based on what you said, Isaiah um, 41, verse, chapter 41, verse 10. Let's say, because I'm a King James Bible person myself. The King James Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, and I will strengthen thee. Ye, I will help thee, ye. I will uphold thee. Uh, I said that one. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The contemporary English version of the Bible says, "Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Don't tremble with fear." I mean, it's not not the SF fear. Don't mm. tremble with fear. I am your God. I will make you strong. As I protect you with my arm, I will give you victory. That that says something totally different. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, absolutely. The, King, the King James Version supersedes the contemporary English version. And this is something, as you say, Liz, I've got uh, uh, the Good News Translation says, don't be afraid, I'm with you, I'm your God. That's the standard. Everybody gets that. Let nothing terrify you. They don't say nothing about terrify. They say dis- dismay and terrify are two totally different things. So um, uh, let nothing dismay you. I will make you strong and I will help you. I will protect you and I will save you. Again, something totally different. Victory mm. versus save versus I will uphold you or thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's a whole different ballgame. And guys, that for me is nuanced to its highest, to its nth degree. Nuanced. Mm-hmm. And of course, everything is subject to interpretation. Everything, every law, every law, every spiritual law is open to interpretation, which is why we are able to use the universal laws, the spiritual laws, the natural laws, God's laws, or whatever you want to call it. That's why we're able to use them in the way in which we do use them. But we need to understand electricity is electricity. Whether it is the lightning bolt that comes out of the sky, it's still electricity. Those bolts can light up your world. Ask Daniel Brinkley. They can light up your world. In the same way, the electricity coming out, the, coming out of your, your socket light switch, you use that incorrectly, it can light up your world the same way a lightning bolt can do. Electricity. We have electricity within the body. How do you think the heart works? It's an electric organ. How do you think the heart works? It works based on literal, hear me guys, literal 
electric impulses. This is why the heart responds so well to um, when they defibrillate. Clear. Wait, you think if your all if you think if your kidneys stop working, they don't they don't shock the kidney. They they don't shock the liver. They don't shock the stomach. They tried shocking the brain and they realized that that crap don't really work. <laughs> because the brain's not electric like no, it's true. The brain's not electric like the heart. The brain doesn't um utilize the body's natural electric ele- electric grid. The, the same way that the heart does. Did I say that the right way? The brain does that. And so, therefore, the brain doesn't respond to shock. Contrary to what they say, the brain doesn't well, maybe, respond to maybe, shock. Maybe, maybe not in the way they were doing it. Because I'm pretty oh, sure the brain does have electricity. Say it again? Yes, it does, Liz. Yes, it yeah, does. So, yeah, the brain so, does have so electricity. The, the way they were doing it was... Um, it was, I, I suppose, that using the defibrillator, it's, I suppose, symbiotic with with the heart. So I mm-hmm. suppose whatever they were using in the brain, it actually wasn't, um, it wasn't conducive it to wasn't get a, a good result. No. Because it, wasn't it was, harmonious. it was, yeah, harmonious, that's it, the word it, I was it, looking it, for. It was, a, yeah. it, was, it was aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. It was aggressive. You know, it, the, the, the electricity of the brain isn't used to make it pump. The electricity of the heart makes it squeeze. It creates the squeeze. And the squeeze is the pump. But that's a whole that's a whole biology lesson by itself, baby. The whole but biology then I lesson by if, itself. If most of the in most of the um the electrical impulses in the brain are mm-hmm. thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. Then that maybe that's why people reacted and had 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 adverse effects on people because their actual thoughts were disrupted oh, yeah. their ability you know their input their, in actual fact their mm-hmm. spiritual self because if your thoughts are you know you thought I, I believe your sport your thoughts are spiritual um so it actually mm-hmm. interfered with their spiritual self didn't it so they couldn't function I, 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 yeah of course I mean, think about when you get a, a shock from static electricity. I mean, you go mm. you go shopping at, um, at uh, what do you call it? I'll go to um, Sam's Club. And guaranteed, there are certain shoes that I just don't wear in there. Or if I roll up there and I've got the shoes on, I prepare myself to be defibrillated with every counter that I touch. And sometimes <laughs> the shock, no, Liz, sometimes the shock is like, whoa. Like you feel it running up your arm and stuff, you know? It's very disconcerting. It's very disconcerting, you know? So that's why when people are going into the thing, you know, they're opening the freezer doors or something like that. I'm like, oh, no, 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 can you just hold that for me? And I put my cart there. (laughs) (laughs) Then let's get up there and get the shock. (laughs) It only happens to you or it's renowned for this? Oh, no. No, 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 it's renowned for that, Liz. You you hear people... Uh, you know, I walk by and I go, oh, you know, and I'm like, damn. You know, and, you know I'm like, mm-hmm, then just get a shock. <laughs> I'm surprised someone hasn't but, sued them in America. No, because I would, I would imagine, well, hopefully it never, ever puts somebody's um, uh, pacemaker and that out of whack. You know, because yeah, but not, not, get a good not. Shot. Yeah, I know. I agree. Not even, um, not even that, because you know, emotional distress, blah 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 blah. I mean, that you you hear that all the time. I'm surprised someone yeah. hasn't actually done it. No, I suppose now that we've spoken about it, it's in the ethos. <laughs> and guys, just for the sake of argument, it's not me. That kind of litigious behaviour doesn't, you know, work for me. So no, but I'm mandacious. Yeah, yeah, that's all mandacious. Yeah. <laughs> They go mandy as well. Yes, darling. But that that being said, guys, one of the things that um you had said, Olivia, and this guys is a a huge nuance. And for my clients out there who are listening and who know me, they know I say this frequently. If you want something to change in your life, you have to make the change. You cannot change anybody. The only person you can change is yourself. And that applies to anything living, breathing earth that you are uh, uh, in relationship with. 
you know, you were talking, you was, you you were saying about, you know, the bear and um, the man deciding that he he wasn't going to get eaten this day. See, mm. I don't know, Liz. I, I I kudos to the dude because I'd be thinking, where can I run? Can I put D in front of me? <laughs> he looks like a tastier morsel than me. You know, it's, it's, it's all that sort of jazz. Actually, I'll, I'll, and I'll talk about the cheetahs in just a second. The animals are oh, cheetahs, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, in order for you to change anything, and you want, for in order for anything to change in your life, you have to change you. You cannot expect your external surroundings to change. And that's people, places, and things unless you change. Because, you see, it's your reality and it's your view. You're seeing it from your eyes. I've said this. Olivia said this. We say this on the show ad nauseum. And so I'm not going to labor this point. But you're the common denominator of everything going on in your world. If well, you actually, things what? change, the common denominator has to change. What were you going to say? Well, they're not, well, 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 each person actually isn't even the common denominator. If you think of what I was saying about, you know, like you said about the aeroplane and looking at ants and going further out and further out <laughs> till we actually are the earth. So whatever you're experiencing <laughs> is actually you. Exactly. It can only be you. So you've got to change. If, if, you, if you want something different in your life guys you have to change it and am I saying that's easy no am I saying that's hard no I'm saying it just is it just is it's can com- I change it, it complex. you it is it's complex just... wins. and it just is can I change it for you no can you change it for you yes now as Olivia said the voice of the people I heard I haven't heard that for a long time but as Olivia as Olivia said <laughs> Is it complex? Yeah, it is. I'm not going to say that it's easy. But is the actual premise simple? Yes, it is. Mm, Is it mm. easy? No, because Mm. we are emotional beings. And as I've said on the show multiple times, do not make choices based on your emotional opinions. And emotional opinions that are yours and or who you have decided to take on board that belong to somebody else. You see, when people caught up in the race mind, as it's called, this is how you have gang activity. And this is how you can have um, a, a, a rash of shootings that are all over the world. They all mimic each other. That's the race mind. Because as Olivia said, you know, once, once, once you pull back, or as we say, once you jest back far enough, once you move back far enough, you can see that we're all connected. Sorry, sorry. And when so are you say, saying race, race is in culture? What do you mean race? Race is in going fast? What, what do you mean? People. No, the, hu- no, the human race. Oh, right. The, okay. No, the human okay. race. The human race, right. Not Mankind. specific races. Yes. Okay. All right. No, 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 no. Not, not, not um, ethnicities. No, race. No, cult, um, human race. I'm sorry, love. Human race. Thank you for that. Oh, she's back on the voice of the people. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I don't remember. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, or, or as they call it, they might call it the monkey mind. Because it, how's it go, Liz? One monkey or two monkey or ten monkeys, I can't even remember the number, of monkeys might do something over here. And next thing, all monkeys all over the globe are doing the same thing. Or they know how to do it. Is that correct? If you yeah, would you yeah. tell me that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the trees. You know, the trees in one valley, if they're being um, picked off by deer or elk or what have you, they, you know, the the trees in another valley will actually produce a chemical or or, or some sort of yeah, some sort exactly. of chemical um, that prevents the deer and the elk from eating them. But they weren't in exactly. they they weren't in the, they weren't in the other valley. Exactly. But they knew they were told by the other trees who were dying. Cousin, cuz, <laughs> killing us over here. They're eating us, cuz. You got to do something, cuz. No. And you know they, the they... got together and they said, <laughs> let's no. produce a poison mm. or something that's really vile to mm. the deer and elk so that they will leave us and at least our young ones so that we can survive. 
as a species. And that's it was it was it was poisonous because they were dying, weren't they? Which is why they yeah, kept no, getting those yeah, people in. Um, yeah, they they mm. were dying, and that's how they figured out that mm. that well, that's how they figured out that the the trees were talking to each other. But you see, they felt that they were under attack. Yeah, but it, it goes back to what I'm saying, which is a revelation for me today. I mean, might not be for anyone else. They are the earth, so exactly. they're going to know, aren't they? Everything is one. Exactly. 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 And that's your revelation, maybe for whatever what's going on. Everything. Mm. Everything is one. And then mm. you turn your you turn your intention and your focus to your creative process based on that new. Um, paradigm or the new foundation that mm-hmm. you've added to your foundation already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and again, I, I was going to say, and uh, actually I'm going to say this because people spend a lot of time looking at, and for my money, this is just Wendy's, looking at stuff that doesn't lend itself, as far as I'm concerned, to stretching your mind. That being said, you can watch anything on TV or in the movie theater and actually find a spiritual connotation to it. You can find something that can assist and support you in your growth. Mm. However, to do that is a choice. Okay? Now, for a lot of people, Liv, a lot of people don't even know that trees talk to themselves. They don't even know that trees in that part of, I think it was South Africa. Was it South Africa? The, the uh, trees I can't remember. In, in whatever part of the world it was, they don't realize that trees, actually, the trees were actually communicating because most people wouldn't actually watch this. They, 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 they wouldn't watch this. But yet still live, when I, when I do tell people about this stuff, they're really quite fascinated. Mm-hmm. It's like it's made. So I'm going to say to the. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Because you're actually going in and out. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh yeah, I I actually I actually moved away from the mic. I'm sorry. Oh okay. All right. Um. And yes, you I can said, hear you. <laughs> you said about um, you know the 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 watching a film or a movie, and, and um. You know, there's a, there's a message in it for you, but uh-huh. I think one of one one of the things that people they'll say, okay, oh yeah, there's some spiritual message in it, but what 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 I believe people real need to realise is specific spiritual message specifically Me- related you. to you. you. It's not for it's yeah. not for anyone else. It's actually specifically for you, and it's it's. You know, as is Wendy said, it's a choice. It's for you to actually catch that and do something with it. Because as I'm going to kind of repeat myself, you know, if Wendy and myself sit down and watch a program, um, the message in it for Wendy is going to be different from the message that for, for me. So it's exactly. important to realize, it, 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 you know, okay, you take you take that scenario, just watching television. It actually tells you how important you are to the universe you know because that's how it's trying to get you you can't find any other way to get your attention so it's trying to get your attention it needs you as much as you need it you know this is you know we're, we're really powerful beings but we just well we've been socialized and believed we've been we've believed the hype you know, um, our forebears have believed the hype and it's come down, down, down. But the one thing is, it's changing now, which is, um, you know, people are starting to think think differently. And it has to change because we are changing. Mm. Even just myself, Liv, and you, we are changing. And as a result, everything around us has to change. And as you said, yeah. we are the planet. Mm-hmm. And so it has to change. You know, one of, one of the things, you know, you were speaking about um, the, uh, the deer and the elk eating the, those, those trees. Yeah. And literally what I wanted to talk about was, 
and this is really a little off topic to quote Jamila. <laughs> this is a little off to, off topic. But I was watching the people who were at one of those safari parks in Europe. I'm oh, assuming. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. And so, uh, and this is on my Facebook page. And and so, this this family with a baby. There were like two guys or three guys, a woman and and a baby, and the baby and a child. Was, there was a child the as well. Okay, and a child, because yeah. I, I, I was so gobsmacked, I didn't even see the child, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, and so they're in a safari park, which really and truly is a huge, whacking great piece of land that they've enclosed animals, wild animals on. They tell you, this is their kingdom. It's their habitat. Remain in your car at all times with the windows rolled up. Even if you stop, leave the engine on. What? No. So what do this family do? To the panic of the people in the car behind them, they get out of their vehicle with the children into this cheetah habitat. Well, all I can say is, it's a good thing that, by and large, contrary to what people believe, big game animals like lions, cheetahs, etc., they don't actually like the taste of us. And that might be one of those mechanisms that we have built into self, so we mm. don't become <laughs> we don't top on the point. menu. Yeah. But that being said, push come to shove, they're a little hungry, like anybody else. They'll eat anything, including you. So they get out of the car, and there's one cheetah there, and next thing I see them coming. And, Olivia, this is where I wanted to go with this. Self-preservation is an amazing thing. Now, I don't know if any of the men in the vehicle were that woman's husband, but the men took off first. The woman and the baby were the last ones to get in the car. And she yeah, was, but she, she was, was but she was she, she was, was strolling she was stro- but she was strolling Wendy everyone else ran even the child yeah. ran and she yeah, was just she was I, just strolling you know something I think she was strolling because in her mind you know the man with the beard mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, you spoke mm-hmm, about mm-hmm, mm-hmm, in her mm-hmm. mind her mind might have said if I run yeah they're gonna chase yeah. me yeah if yeah. I run they're gonna chase me and if I fall. And they attack me. It's one thing, but my baby is fair game. Mm-hmm. Because I don't yeah. understand why she was just walking, Liz. Because I, I looked at her, I'm like, you silly wench, run! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everyone said that to me as well. Not not your precise words, but yes. they couldn't understand why. But what you're saying know. makes make, makes perfect sense. Yes. That must have been instinctively she, she was like, okay, don't run. Exactly. Don't run. Don't run. Walk. But mm-hmm. intuition said to because I like for her husband and that, I mean, I'd be looking for a divorce, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they didn't even, they didn't try. He didn't, none, oh, well, whoever they, maybe they weren't, I mean, it might have been her son. She, I mean, it wasn't close up anyway, but whoever it was with her, they definitely weren't um, going to save <laughs> the save mother and baby, that's for sure. No, it wasn't. It was every man for himself, literally. Because mm. I said to myself, well, if that's her husband, I know that things will never be the same. And if those are her grown kids, I'll be putting their asses out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you. You need to come out. <laughs> come out. And again, as I said, this is slightly off topic. As Jamila would say, it's slightly off topic. But that being said, it does lend itself to us looking from the outside in. We don't know, and this is a nuance. You never know what's going on in somebody's mind. And we know this. You never know what's going on in somebody's mind. You never know what their intuition has told them. So sometimes it's just to allow them to be. Mm. Sometimes it's just to allow them to be. So how do you control? How do you live the life? you want to live? How do you get what you want in life? 
Well, for those of you who listen to the show regularly, I know you're going to turn off. You're going to get ready to turn off because it's the same thing. I'm going to tell you the same thing week in, week out. You need to know what you want. People will tell me, even up to yesterday, Dr. D, I just don't know. Yes, you do. No, Dr. D, you don't understand. And I'm like, no, baby, you don't understand, which is what the problem is. You know what you want. No, I don't. Then tell me what you don't want. Well, I don't want to be here in Shade Tree. Well, you just told me what you do want. You don't want to be here. What else don't you want? Well, I don't want to be on, I don't know, government assistance or whatever. Well, okay. You've just told me that you want to have independent means of making money. You don't want baby daddy anywhere in the Kool-Aid. Well, you don't want him dead or anything like that. So I said, how about a harmonious, a harmonious separation where he's no longer in the picture? And she wasn't feeling harmonious, to tell you the truth. So I said, we'll work on that one. We'll, 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 we'll work on that one. She's still feeling, feeling definitely a little aggrieved by him. Hostile. So, yeah, hostile, to say the least. And I started to laugh, and she started to laugh, and I'm like, no, it's cool, it's cool. You know, some things you have, there you go, another nuance. Some things you have to work on. And so for her, really and truly, it wasn't about, no, I'm not going to be ultra forgiving or what have you. He beat my ass, which is why I'm here, and I'm not over that yet. And it takes time. And that's okay. As long as you acknowledge and truly acknowledge that it's taking time for you, and I'm not ready for this yet. And when you own it, when you own it like that, you take control of your life. So, number one, know what you want so you can ask for it. Be very clear on what you are asking for. Because when it comes back to you, which is what happens to most of us, we're like, I said I wanted blah, 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 blah. You know, no, I said I wanted... Vanilla with, no, ice cream with double vanilla bean and raspberry syrup. And they got me Rocky Road with raspberry syrup. But I wasn't clear. Because when, they, when I said I wanted vanilla with, you know, double vanilla with raspberry syrup, I qualified it by, truthfully, the thing that I really want is the raspberry syrup. I just put a disruption in. And so they only had two scoops of vanilla, double vanilla, left in the store. And the woman who came in and sat four tables, and this happens to people who, sit, who sat four tables behind. She came in 15 minutes behind me. They gave that to her. <laughs> because she was, no, she was definite. I want vanilla, double vanilla with raspberry, uh, with raspberry syrup. I said, I want double vanilla with raspberry syrup. But, you know, the real thing that's really important to me is the raspberry syrup. So they brought me bloody Rocky Road with a whacking great load of raspberry syrup. And I'm an unhappy camper. (laughs) It's a nuance. And it's a very real nuance. And that's what we do in life. You know, do you want so-and-so? Oh, I don't care about that. I don't care about the money. I just care about the creativity. Or I don't really care about, um, you know, what my hair looks like. I just care about my skin. I don't really care about X, Y, Z. And then when your hair is tore up from the floor up or it starts falling out because in order for it to fall out, you have to um, attract into, your, into that realm, uh, what do you call this thing, a thyroid issue, you're freaking upset. You're upset. But did you hear what you said? Did you hear your words? Are you listening to your internal conversation? Are you listening to what it is that you are, um, what it is that you are, are, um, are saying to yourself? Are, are you looking at where your emotions are? And I mean, really, guys, are you looking at where your emotions are? Where are your emotions? 
Are your emotions all attached and jazzed to the thing that you say that you want? Or are your emotions stuck on or attached to all this stuff that's gone before and it's just pissing you off? Every time you think of it, you become inflamed. Oh, there's, there's a catch for you. Inflamed. Any inflammatory disease, which are most diseases, any inflammatory, inflammatory disease, you're now open to it. These are nuances. They're simple nuances, and as Olivia did say, that have a complex reaction within your life. So how do you stop this process? Well, you have to make a clear and conscious choice to say that you want something different. And in wanting something different, you need to make a clear and conscious choice that you are going to make change. And not try to make change externally to you because everything in your world that has externalized has come from an internal perspective so that you are willing to make change within you. That means how you think about things. That, I take that back. That means with how you dialogue about things within your mind. That means your imagination you choose to take active control over your imagination. And then you choose to take active control over the things that you actually want to um, elaborate on, the things that you truly want to add your emotional, um, your, excuse me, your five senses to. It means that you take control of your emotions. And I am not saying that you don't be emotional. I'm not saying don't be mad when, when, you, when, when something has ticked you off. Don't cry at the, the toilet pa paper advert with the little puppy rolling toilet paper all over the house like that wouldn't get you mad. Don't, don't, don't negate those things. Accept them for what they are. Those are your emotions. Your emotions are flags. You emote stuff to show you stuff but not for you to make a choice on. In order for you to make a choice, you need to step back. You know, if guys, for, for those of you who have ever been to Las Vegas, and I, I would say Las Vegas, and it's, it's becoming prevalent throughout the world and, of course, other places, but if you've ever been to Las Vegas, you've been to the buffet capital of the world. This is the buffet capital of the world. And sometimes, if it's one of the better buffets, you walk in, there's so much food, you don't even know what you want or where to start. <laughs> Is that true, Liv? Would you say that's true, Liv? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's just, I mean, they have, they have some similar you know ones what? over here. It is, it is. And you don't know. Um, you might go in thinking you want something, but... You know your 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 eyes have a your, your, this 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 um, overload exactly. sensory sensory sensory. So you find Agreed. yourself maybe forgetting that you wanted that and getting something else, and then you come out and think, oh, actually, do you know what? I actually went in for such and such. Oh, yeah, and I didn't want that. Oh, this was good. It was good try, but I actually wanted whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this this is this is what I mean. You know, sort of like when you become in sensory overload based on your emotions. Because you're seeing things in color, you're tasting things in color, you're, you're um, smelling things, you're, you're feeling things, the whole nine yards. You look at all of, this, all of this stuff, but the name of the game is, if you say, I'm going to step back for a minute, or I'm going to sit down, I'm going to order my drink, and I'm going to think about everything that I've just witnessed, what is it that I am wanting? And you'll be surprised, based on personal experience, not only will you eat a hell of a lot less, but you'll actually get what you want. You're Instead taking of control. You, you every station. Exactly, Liz. It's about taking control. Control. Instead of you pass every station, you're like, oh, that looks good. I'll take a little bit of that. Oh, that looks, oh, shoot, I need another plate. You know, when you pass the people and that's embarrassing because you've got two plates. And you get to the table and you know, your husband looks at you and he 
raises an eyebrow like, oh, were well, you really hungry? <laughs> <laughs> or what? And you lie and you say you lie sweetly. No, I thought you might like some of this. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, guys, no, as Olivia said, truthfully speaking, it's about you taking control. Living the life that you want to live, it's about you taking control. It's not, not about, about understanding. You your emotions. Go ahead, love. I said, not about understanding the power that you have over oh. your reality. Your reality doesn't have power over you unless you. Ch- I mean, even if you Come choose on. it to do so, you still it, you still have you st- it, you still retain the power. But it's about um, being in control of the power that you put out, and we're choosing where you want to direct exactly. that power to. Exactly. It's what train tracks you want to ride down on. You know, and that's it. You know, you, you if you allow your emotions to run roughshod over you, you are going to be an emotional wreck when it comes to making your choices. You'll, you'll dither, you won't know what to do, should I do this and blah, 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 but you'll be emotional wreck. And everybody at some stage in their life has had that experience where they're in emotional overload. So see your emotions for what they are. And as Olivia said, you take control of them. You take control of them by what it is you are going to attach sensory side of you to. I'm angry. Well, you know you're angry. You know you're angry. What does it look like, feel like, taste like, smell like? When you start adding your senses to it, you take it to a whole new level. And that level is called belief. And what you believe is the thing that you receive. You see, the thing that you believe is the transmission. We transmit. That's what we do. We're receivers and transmitters. You transmit this energy. It goes down that train track. And when it gets to its final destination, which is the creative process, where it's creative, it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back to you guys. It's coming back. And nothing can stop it coming back. Your word will not return to you void. There's so much truth in that. And it didn't say your, your, your word um, will return to you void. Uh, your word won't return to you void. Your word will not return to you void, um, you know, in X a time. That's not how it goes. You see, you could have said something when you were 15 or 16 and engaged your five senses, and it's on that track. But all this other stuff had been happening, but it was making its way back to you. You get to 55, and you're wondering, what the hell? How, what, huh? how, how can this happen to me at this age? Well, you see, time isn't a respecter of age. Time knows nothing about age. Time just knows time. We're the one who ascribes things like age and this and that. Time just knows time. And time is ever moving and evolving. Ever moving and evolving. So, you want to make change? You need to change yourself first. Your life is an inside job with an external manifestation. So, you need, you need to make the change within yourself. You cannot, um, uh, what do you call it? You cannot depend on others to make the change for you. That's not going to work. That's not how that works. And above all, as I said today, and I say above all, in addition to, as I said today in the Facebook Live, don't allow anyone to control you. You can take advice, but don't let anybody tell you where you are a deficit in your life. And just so we're clear, I'm not telling you where you're a deficit in your life or what's not working for you. What I'm telling you is the nuances in life are important and that if things are turning out the way that you want, perhaps you need to look at the nuances of life and the laws of attraction. And that's what I'm telling you. Take control of your life. Oh, sorry, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> you want to know how to live the life you want to live? Take control of your life. 
That's what I'm telling you. But of course, if that doesn't work for you, if that doesn't vibrate for you, then it's not for you. It's not for you. And once again, how do you do this? You need to know what you want. You need to know with clarity. You need to understand the difference between an emotional choice and an, observe, an, 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 an emotional choice and a choice that is made based on observation. You need to engage all five of them, because they will encourage belief. And once you have that, once you have that, and you know without a doubt that this is what you want, you, you're able to hold on to that with two hands. So that when the disruptions come, when life tsunamis come, when because when life tsunamis come, no, I'm going to say it. Because we are all here, and all we are all of the one mind, the God mind. We are all of the one mind. If somebody over here is doing whatever they're doing, and it's not so good, if we have any doubts or we have anything that can undermine us, that something over here, is going to come this way. Oh, energy is always seeking energy so it can perpetuate itself. It's living. Everything is living. Thoughts are a living thing, but it needs something to feed it. Does that make sense, Liv? Yeah, it makes sense. I, um, I was just thinking, um, because you're saying about hungry and, and you're talking about buffet before, I was just starting to write it down. So I'm trying to, I'm going to see if I can remember, um, because it's a really good analogy for um, getting what you want. So like, okay, you go to a buffet and you're hungry and you'd already decided, mm. oh, I, okay, I want this and this. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I, that's what I'm wanting. And uh, you go to the buffet and uh, yeah, you pick out what you want, but then you pass something else, then you take something else, then you take something else, take you take, and then you take everything mm. back to your seat, and pick, pick, you know, you're, yeah, you're eating it. You're eating a bit, a bit. You're eating a bit of what you want, and the other stuff, or you eat all of what you want and the other stuff. But the other mm -hmm. stuff, whether you eat it a little bit, a, a little bit or a lot, is the stuff in your reality that actually mm. is. A, your blocks to getting what you want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so in the mm -hmm. end you might get up and you might um throw even stuff that you wanted away you 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 throw it all in the bin so it goes it all goes into the mix but what what is actually doing is you know when you think about you saying what is it what you're what you're wanting if you're putting too much stuff on your plate that you actually don't really want it prevents you from getting the completeness of what exactly. it is that you say you of are what wanting. You do. Yeah. 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 It in, it interrupts the flow. Mm. It interrupts the flow, guys. It totally and utterly interrupts the flow. And so um for you guys, for the attraction is out there, I'll wind it up by saying this. Life is a glorious thing. It's a wonderful thing. And it's your life. And it's all about you and your choices and the choices that you want to make. Understand that every choice that you make, every choice that you make has a reaction. Your choice is an action and your, your, your choice has a reaction. And the reaction is something that you can, you might be able to gauge. You might be able to say, this is going to happen versus that, but understand you have no control over the reaction. The only thing that you have control over is you. You want to know how to live your life? Control yourself. And I'm not talking about putting you in a box, but control yourself in how you use your thought process. Control yourself in how you invest your time. Don't just spend your time. Invest your time. An investment is something that will give you an, a return. You can spend your time doing a lot of nothing, a lot of busy work. However, if you invest your time in doing something that you are wanting for you, you will get a return on that investment. 
So use your time wisely. Change your internal dialogue. And you really can change your internal dialogue. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Change your, you, you change your internal dialogue. And when you change your internal dialogue, when you change your internal dialogue, your, your whole world will change. Your whole world will change. Remember, you can't control anybody. So the only person you can control is yourself. And that's what I'd say on this moment. That, that, that's what I'd say for now. You want to be happy? You need to live your life in a happy way. You need to live your life in a happy way. All right? And so that's what I'd say. So, Liv, is there anything that you would like to add? This has been a long show today. This has been a good show for me because I've had my... I'll tell you what, guys. I answered a couple of questions that I had (laughs) (laughs) because things have been going around my head for things that have come up for me, and I just got my answers. You know, Mm -hmm. literally, I just got my answers. So, on that score, I'm very grateful. And so, thank you, guys. (laughs) Thank you. Um, So, is there anything that you'd like to add, Liv? No, there's nothing that I'd like to say, Wendy. Okay. So on that note, guys, what I would say to you is thank you so much. I actually hope, not I hope, I know this will be beneficial to many, many, many people out there. Live your life the way you want to live it. Take control of you. You don't have to be in a box, but you have to be consciously aware of what you are doing. Recognize that there are nuances in life, and those nuances can affect greatly the outcome of anything that you want to experience. So on that note, guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Um, Love you, sis. Love you guys. Until next time. Okay. I love you, last. Bye, darling. Um, Wait, wait, wait. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn from Las Vegas, Nevada, and you are... Olivia Lashley from London in the UK. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. She, she checked me. She gave me a check from the neck. But she's all right. See you later.